What do you think makes a good secret coin in Geometry Dash? It's a hard question, but I feel like there's some ground rules that everyone can agree on. In my mind, coins should offer an additional challenge in the level that feels more rewarding to pull off. My favorite coins are the ones that you notice during casual gameplay, but have to take a moment to think about how you'll actually get it. For example, the second coin in Geometrical Dominator may look out of reach at first, but it's pretty easy to figure out that all it takes is an extra jump. Or, the third coin in Cycles seems completely out of bounds, until you run through it in practice mode and realize that there's a bunch of spikes missing. Ultimately, players should notice a hint in their first playthrough, then go back and examine it the second time around, maybe even brainstorming ideas before they even get there. And then, once they collect the coin, they should want to try and get it in future playthroughs as well. Sometimes creators make coins that are really excessive, and if people never want to get it again, it means that they're doing something wrong. So, do the coins in the official levels do a good job at this? For the most part, yes! Not all of them are perfect, like there's a couple coins where you just have to randomly fall, but otherwise wrapped up coins are absolute bangers. A lot of them are really clever. Oh yeah, hi, uh, I'm here now. I got tired of talking over a black screen when I'm not sure what to edit in, so... woof. Still not a furry by the way, that's different. Anyways, yeah, I really like the official level coins, so then what's the problem? Jump Trash Sub-Zero is a free ad-supported expansion app of Geometry Dash developed and published by Robtop Games and released on December 21st, 2017. Geometry Dash is back with a brand new adventure, and this time there's three more full-length levels which just so happen to have nine more coins to collect. Overall, Sub-Zero is an extremely good spin-off game. The levels are really fun to replay, and it does a good job showing off all the potential that 2.2 will have when it, if it comes out. Obviously, there's the big stuff, like going in reverse, but I'm personally more interested in how these mechanics will actually affect modern levels. For example, most of Power Trip is in 3x speed, and while that's normally really stressful, this time it's easy to sight read because the camera zoomed out. So yeah, Sub-Zero's good, it holds up really well. It's just that the coins are... how do I put this nicely... absolutely terrible? But why am I making a whole video on this? It's because I'm worried. If Robtop was able to screw up the coins on three levels back to back, then who knows how you're going to get the coins in the new 2.2 levels. Every update only adds more and more new features, and just because you can use them to hide coins, it doesn't mean you should. With that being said, let's run through each of Sub-Zero's coins, and I'll try to prove my point. The first coin in all of Sub-Zero is located in this little ship part in Press Start. Did you catch it? No? Well, it's behind this little hill thing over here. You'll notice it's missing a few spikes, which is a somewhat decent giveaway that it's hiding something. It encourages players to pay attention and investigate for anything strange, and if we go by that logic, it's a fine coin. The reason I don't like it, though, is because of what happens when you compare it with previous coins. For example, Back on Track is a similar coin, but this one is way more obvious. And I know it's because it's already such an easy level, but have you ever stopped to think that the reason the coin isn't hidden well is because it couldn't have been? When secret coins were first introduced, there were no alpha triggers or secret tiles or anything like that. Nowadays, you can completely blend in the secret path with the rest of the level, and then only reveal it once it's been found. Is the missing spikes here enough of a giveaway? Probably, although I wouldn't complain if it was also hinted in the glow or something. Otherwise, it's alright, and I'm only complaining because it's going to set the bar for the remaining coins. Also, I have to give credit where it's due, this one syncs with the music. Right after Press Start's first coin, you go through this short back and forth section that's split up into two mini stages. And sure enough, there's a coin hidden here. In fact, we already passed it. To get this one, you have to skip the last orb of stage 1, which shifts around the platforms below and reveals the level's secret coin. Let me repeat that. It shifts around the platforms, then reveals the coin. And you're supposed to know it's there, because it's the only place where you can safely fall off the normal path. But there's no reason to try that, because there's seemingly nothing there. Just a big wall to crash into. If you want to come across this coin without looking it up, you have to go through the level thinking about all the possible ways that you could break it. Then the level goes, wow, you thought you were so clever by going this way, here's a coin for your hard work. How are you supposed to know that it's there? You shouldn't have to spend your time searching for invisible coins by dying to every obstacle in the level. What I would have done is make the coin visible from the very start, but keep it out of reach. Because at least then you'd have a reason to look around, but no, that would be too much of a giveaway apparently. How about we just make it materialize into existence instead? And this is only the second coin in the game. You know what? The last coin's fine. You clearly see it on your first attempt, then you know for next time to stay above the laser and fly a little more carefully. It's almost exactly the same as Deadlock's last coin, but it's alright because they both work really well. It offers an optional little challenge, it feels rewarding when you get it, and it feels tempting when you don't get it. In my eyes, that's a good coin. Now all we have to do is apply that knowledge to the other levels in Sub-Zero. How hard could it possibly be? <sighs> 
Just relax, Craig. It's just a game. Everything will be fine. Ugh, where do I even begin with Nakam? Oh my god. It's not a bad level. In fact, it's probably my favorite of the three. But it's just that the coins are so... Well, we already passed the first one. We're five seconds into the level. You know where the coin is? Oh, I don't know. How about this random hanging wall over here? There's not even the tiniest visual indicator. In fact, it looks identical to the previous pillar. And you don't even realize that there's a coin there until you've already found it. If the coin was floating there out of reach, then maybe it would have been justified. But no, the only way to find this coin is by ramming yourself into a random wall. And it's in a spot where nobody would even think to jump. I know it's supposed to be a secret coin, but it's so different from all the other coins in normal levels. For example, the Seven Seas does something similar, but at least there you know exactly when you've passed the coin. Anyways, obviously these can't all be winners. Let's just skip and take a look at the next one. Alright, right off the bat, I have some good news about the second coin. Look, you're given a hint. You'll see that key even if you're not going for the coin, and it's pretty hard to miss. So, I'd say we're off to a good start or maybe my expectations are just really low. Anyways, if it's not obvious, you get the key by flicking yourself up at the start of the ship part, then you can move on with your life. I like this. I think it's in a good spot. It flows well with the level, but you still have to go out of your way and challenge yourself to get it. And it's definitely more tricky than it looks. It reminds me a lot of the first coin in X-Step, except this one's a two-parter. So once you have the key, a new path will open up in the ball part shortly after, and you can swoop down and pick up the coin. If you miss the key, the coin will still be there, but not the platform. So it's fine then, right? The key's always visible, the coin's always visible, and it's a nice little challenge. Well, sure, but why is it a key? Why couldn't the coin be put right in the ship part? Keys can sometimes be cool, but in this case the coin is completely free once you pick it up, so why even bother? Now, you can argue that Deadlock does the exact same thing with the first coin. In fact, gameplay-wise, it's extremely similar to this one. But I'm actually going to give Deadlocked a free pass just because it was the first level to ever use the key gimmick. It was cool the first time, but now that so many creators have started throwing in useless keys, it doesn't feel special anymore. All in all, the second coin's passable, but there's room for improvement. In my opinion, it's still the best coin in Sub-Zero, but it's also the hardest. Alright. For this last coin, I want to see something readable, something fun, something rewarding. Honestly, I'm comfortable with anything as long as it's not hidden behind a wall or something stupid like that. For the love of God! Yeah, good job, Rob Chop. You really knocked this last one out of the park. Get it? Knocked it out? I don't even think I have any criticism for this coin that hasn't already been said. Any sort of visual indicator is probably going to be too obvious because of how few colors there are. So honestly, I would make the coin completely visible but throw in an extra challenge. Just like the other coins, this one isn't even hard. There's no skill involved, it's just annoying to find. It's yet another case of bump into every obstacle in the level and maybe you'll find something. It's not a challenge if it's only hard the first time. I want a coin that's repeatedly hard to get, not some kid's secret Minecraft base. You don't feel any sort of gratification after picking this coin up. In fact, it's two less clicks than the normal route. I'm looking for a coin that's fun, but instead you give me platform 9 and 3 quarters. This is why a game needs playtesters and quality assurance. Why don't you run your coins through, I don't know, Viperin? He's good with these things. He's like the game's official PR guy. Look at all these detailed essays he leaves. <sighs> Sorry, that, that got a little heated. There's only one more level. We can do this. So, Power Trip. I don't know what it is about this level, but it's just not as interesting. If I had to guess, it's probably because the last two levels already showed off all the new mechanics, so there's nothing particularly groundbreaking about this one. Anyways, first coin, it's floating up there, and you're down here. So far, the coin's off to a great start, because by looking at it, you immediately start coming up with all sorts of interesting ideas. For example, to get the coin, you most likely have to skip the blue gravity portal. So maybe there's a hidden orb over here that you can click? Or maybe it has something to do with this spike? Ooh, or what if it's an entirely alternate path that you find earlier in the level? Unfortunately, Robtop decided to crush all of our dreams and just made a couple blocks passable again. And this time it's even lazier! The blocks don't even fade out when you pass through them. And once again, you don't feel good about yourself after getting the coin. It's two less clicks, just like last time. As far as actually fixing the coin goes, there's not much to work with. But maybe visually change the blocks you pass through a little? You could darken them or shift them to the side a little bit. Actually, even mirroring them might look good in this case. But put something. Imagine if the first coin of Stereo Madness looked like this. There's only nine coins in Sub-Zero, and this is already the fourth one that you get by passing through a completely normal looking wall. On the bright side, it can't possibly get much worse than th Wait, is that the second coin already? It's been nine seconds! Right off the bat, this coin looks exactly the same as the last one. 
It's still floating out of reach, and it's got the same circle outline around it. At this point, I wouldn't even be surprised if it's like Platinum Adventure where it's literally the same coin, but I can assure you it's not. So like before, let's pause and think this one through. This section is clearly playing around with a gimmick where you warp from the top of the screen to the bottom, so that probably means the coin has something to do with it. Maybe with proper timing, you can warp in a specific way so that you pick up the coin, but where else is there to jump? I guess you could always try- wait, no, no, please don't tell me you just fall through this wall. That's it! I- I don't know what to say anymore! That's five coins! Where you, that's more than half of the coins in the game! I can't do this anymore. I really can't. I'm not even joking. I- I don't know what to do anymore. Robtop, you had something going with this whole screen warping thing. There was so much potential for a really interesting coin, but you did the exact, and I mean exact same thing as the last coin, which was nine seconds ago. Do you find this funny? There's no way you didn't know exactly what you were doing here. I'm telling you, we're officially doomed for 2.2. You're going to have to run into every wall in the level, and if you're lucky, you might find, I don't know, one-tenth of a coin? Wrapped up, how much time did you even spend on these coins? You probably gave them like three seconds of thought and then called it a day and went back down to your gym for six more hours of lifting. Maybe the next thing you should work out is better places to put these stupid yellow circles. <sighs> oh yeah, and if you're playing on iOS, you can't even get this coin. Remember when I said this is basically the same coin as the previous one? Well, that wasn't a joke. It literally is the same coin. I looked in the level data and on iOS, both of the coins have an ID of one, which means that on iOS, the level doesn't even have a second coin. It has two first coins. If you pick up either of these coins, it counts as coin one. This was fixed on Android, but still. Next time, maybe you should playtest the frickin' game before sending it out to Apple. With that being said, there's only one more coin. Let's just get this over with. So, this last coin's certainly interesting. It's just given to you for free at the end of the level. But this isn't a generic custom level, so there actually is a catch. You have to make it here without falling during the robot part and skipping the entire rest of the level. That's right, you actually have to play the game. Oh yeah, and more importantly, it only appears if you click a couple times when this text pops up earlier on. Yeah. What? I know it's fun to click during pauses in the level, but do you really need to reward people for it? And why do you need to wait until the very end of the level to hand out the coin? You could have just given it right there. Even if there's an indicator for when you click during this part, you don't realize it's for a coin until you reach the very end. I don't know, I really can't wrap my head around why you unlock a coin by doing this. I have no constructive criticism for this coin, because it's completely beyond saving. I would just scrap it entirely and put a new one in the spider part or something. Kind of like Finger Dash, but this time at triple speed. The other two levels in Sub-Zero were really good, but Power Trip feels extremely lazy and rushed. It's plagued with bugs and oversights and boring ideas and feels so much more empty compared to its predecessors. Look at all this beautiful air deco! So, what have we learned today? Although Robtop is getting better at programming, he's somehow getting worse at hiding coins. He introduces lots of cool features like the Alpha Trigger, but then proceeds to use them in really stupid ways. Sub-Zero is the tiniest taste of what's coming in 2.2, so it's going to take a miracle for the upcoming levels to have coins that are even half decent. Whatever happened to the third coin in Stereo Madness, or the second coin in Theory of Everything? Coins used to be good, they used to feel good to get. The ones in Sub-Zero just leave me empty. Are there custom levels with worse coins? Yes, absolutely. But you're a game designer, Robtop. You've been doing this for almost a decade. I love your work, but I know you can do better. So yeah, Sub-Zero is a good game. It may be a little rushed, but it's nothing to be ashamed of. The problem is that these are without a doubt the worst coins you've ever placed. I know on the surface this just felt like a joke video where I yell over something I don't like about a game, but if you look beyond that, it's a deep dive into game design and how to add collectibles that feel fair and rewarding. Maybe you can take away some of what I said and find ways to apply it to your own levels. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. I know I went on for surprisingly long, but if you're still here, that hopefully means you enjoyed it. At the end of the day, I'm still very excited about 2.2, and I'm sure I'll have more good things to say about it than whatever I did here. Also, 50,000 likes and I'll make a tier list of every coin in the game.